I know what a runcible spoon looks like, but I don't know what the problem is. Which is starting now, and uh, we will later be painting some bodies. And right away, Andrew Bartowski and Mary Hurlbut will be performing some new songs. Are we safe? Yeah. Oh, LD's here. Well, he's going to have to wait right here while Andrew. You go ahead now. So let me introduce Andrew and Mary. Anyone else coming in with your phone? No. I think what we'll do is the first thing will be a flute solo piece. And I was thinking your friend Simon, who yeah. attends one of your classes. Simon Verite. Yeah, that's right. He sent me uh, by email uh, a sculpture, a picture of a sculpture that he's working on, uh -huh. along with a sketch. And it's about the story of Syrinx, okay, which is sort of like a Greek myth about date rape. Oh, uh, yes. How appropriate. There was, there was a, there was a God Pan, who was very much taken with this river nymph whose name is Syrinx, and so he went after her, he chased after her, and of course she had nothing, wanted nothing to do with him, and so she prayed to her father, who apparently was a river god, do something, and so her father turned her into a bunch of reeds, and so Syrinx just comes upon a bunch of reeds in the swamp, and sighs, and as he sighs, of course, the reeds made a sound from his breath. So he cut them down in different lengths, and he came up with what they now call panpipes. Oh. And um, this story was then made into a, um, a musical story by Claude Debussy. He was commissioned to write an orchestral piece, and uh, he came up with this instead, which is one page for one flute. And of course, they were all very upset. They thought he had cheated them. But this is considered one of the great pieces for flute. There you have it. Okay. So here we go. This is just for flute.
Okay. This is what it is. Amarili Mia Bella, right? Like this group is Machini, right? Yeah. Amaryllis, my beauty. From what period? 15th century? 16th century? Yeah. Okay. okay. Yes. 
title and the composer. That was yeah. uh, Nel Cor Piu No Mi Sento by Giovanni Paisiello. And the plot line is kind of cute. What is the plot line? Is this? It's a woman who's being courted by three different lovers. And she's stuck in the dilemma of which one to choose. And so she says, why can't I feel the, the youth of my heart and love? It's mm -hmm. all your fault. You're, you're chewing me up. You're spitting me out. You're putting me through this terrible, terrible dilemma. The theme actually was used all through the 18th and 19th centuries. It was very popular. Everybody wrote variations on this theme that you heard. It's amazing. Just everybody. That worked. So women don't know what they want. Well, no, they want no. it all. Uh, Limo, La Donna and Mobile. La Donna and Mobile. They all do it. They all do it. That's the high next. They all do it. Yes, you do. Oh, they all do it. They all do it. That's well, it. Yeah. Women know exactly what they want. Yeah, but you won't give it to us. <laughs> That's true. Every <laughs> second of every day. Every second of every day. <laughs> now, I'm going to play one more solo. By the way, these arrangements were done by Mary. Baba. Uh, thank you, Mary. You're welcome. Okay, I'm going to so if I can find it. It's an oddity. Uh, it's by Stephen Foster. <coughs> and of course, we all know Stephen Foster, with, with the writer of great racist songs and stuff like that. And he lived on the Bowery, as a matter of fact. Oh, really? And he died on the Bowery in a Flophouse uh, hotel. And he just wrote, what he did was he was a commercial writer. He wrote what were called topical songs. And he wrote something in the 1850s called the Social Orchestra, where he took all of his tunes and he arranged them for what was a, a dance band of the time. You'd have a flute, a violin, a piano, and a cello. And any kind of flexible combination thereof. And there's one piece for solo flute, believe it or not, called Anadolia. And I'm going to play it. And it sort of sounds as if um, it's um, uh, way down upon a Swanee <laughs> River, as if written by Bellini. That's the only way to describe it. <laughs> yeah. Anyhow, and it's it's a, it's a very nice piece. I mean, he was, his his topical material for his songs was terrible, but he had great lyric gifts. So what are you going to do? That's it. Okay, here we go. Anadolia.
Okay, great. Thank you, Andrew Thank you. and Mary, for helping us bring in the new year and for celebrating the Salius' 500th birthday. And then we're going to have a little interview break, and Warren is set up for their concert, which starts at uh, 7.30, wait, 7.30 in half an hour, right? So get food and drink. Let's turn the lights back on. Let's take Andrew, Mary, and Leon, and Barbara again. Yeah. 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 Yeah.